Hello, and welcome to the Trojan TV finale. I'm Cam. I'm Annie. And I'm Riley. And I'm CJ. Today, we are going to reflect on this crazy school year. This year has been pretty weird, with going from in-person to online multiple times. No kidding. In the early release days last week, even messed up our plans for this show. Yeah, it's been crazy. It's also been fun, and we have a lot of memories to look back on. Yeah, for sure. I'm super excited for this summer. I think we are all ready for summer and move on from this crazy year. Well, we're all here for a little bit longer, so let's get this show on the road. Trojan TV starts now. To start off the show, we have something exciting for you to watch. The MIPA Film Challenge Video Contest Submissions. MIPA is founded by Michigan State and is an organization that consists of journalism teachers, publication advisors, and their teachers. They have a series of awards each year that student journalists from around Michigan can submit and compete in. In fact, Trojan TV won a ton of awards this year, including gold status overall, which was really awesome. But they also hold an annual film challenge where students had to create a short film with a specific theme, a sentence you had to say, and a prop that you needed to use. This year's theme was in your dreams. The sentence to say was when you say it like that, it's, it's almost poetry. And the required prop was, a, was to use a piece of toast. And most of us use Mackie's granddaughter's plastic toast from her kitchen. Check it out. Let's take a look at some creative and funny films that students came up with for the challenge. Hi George, I just want to tell you how much I love you. And your smile is like the sun bringing flowers in spring. Your eyes are like cute chocolate chips. I love you so much. You are so nice and kind. Oh, you know, when you say it like that, it almost sounds like poetry. No, 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 you didn't know how I feel. You ruined my life. <laughs> Sadie, wake up, it's time for school. Huh? Whew, it didn't send, it was just a dream. <laughs> this is some good toast. I'm done. And now, please welcome Dr. Bill. Hello, everybody. Now, today on the show, we have a special guest who loves their toast. Audience, please welcome Jimmy. Hello, everybody. Jimmy has a terrible addiction to toast, to the point where he eats upwards of five loaves per day. Yep, I do. Thank you, sir. You see, right there, you cannot go a few seconds without eating a piece of toast. Why is that? Well, there's a backstory to all of this. Which is? My father, he worked in a bread factory, and every day he would come home with at least three loaves of bread, and that just supplemented us for years. And I feel like that the world is a better place with toast. So let me guess. You found something to help our society, like every other person that comes on this show. Well, I found out that toast, it just calms you, and it is better for the human mind. And everyone that takes a bite of toast just, just feels that buttery, warm, crispy goodness going through their uh, body. Well, you know what, Jimmy? When, when you say it like that, it's almost poetry. Crew, yeah. Bring me some toast. Give him toast. Give him toast. Give him toast. Give him toast. Pretty good, isn't it? It's delicious. <laughs> oh my 
my gosh. I need some toast. Not your best, CJ. You can improve a lot. No! Get set, go! I know, I got an A. What'd yeah. you get? I also got an A. Hey, guys. Ugh. So anyway, about the math test, I also got an A on it. Stronger, smarter, and faster, and everyone likes me now. CJ, the toast didn't do that. The toast was not magical. All it did was make you believe in yourself. And that made you able to do all of those things. You had it inside of you all along. When you say it like that, it almost sounds like poetry. <laughs> well, that was a weird dream. Okay, you're gonna be late to school. Come on. Oh yeah, we gotta be a school stop. Oh, I had a weird dream about school. I'm so hungry. Let's see what we have. Oh, cereal's too wet. Bagel's too dry. Where's the toast? I want to cry. Wow, when you say it like that, it's almost poetry. By the way, just ask the toast gods. Oh, great and powerful toast gods, bless me with your toast. Those were fun. Well, keeping with our theme this e crazy year, we have to cut this short. So instead of doing our usual format, we're leaving you with all of the stories that have not yet been shown this year, created by our many talented DMC students. In today's things you may not know about your teacher, Ms. Alpers, the main office assistant, talks about her kidneys. Did you know that she donated her kidney to her brother? Well, she did. Here's her story. Twelve years ago, Ms. Alpers found out that both her brother and sister needed a new kidney. So what does a person do in that position is leave it to science. So in our matching, which takes quite a long time between blood work and tissue work, 
in our matching, I was matched to my brother and not my sister. The decision to donate an organ is not an easy one and comes with a cost. The pain from surgery and recovery time can be intense. Well, immediately after surgery was awful, simply awful for both of us, but he was much worse than me. Um, kidney removal is much less invasive and the heal time is much shorter than the recipient's time. So a few weeks of tired, a few weeks of sore for me, months of it for my brother Chris. There weren't any changes for Ms. Alpers after surgery. She still had to go to the doctor once a year, but that's really all. On the other hand, her brother had to go every two weeks. And he has to be on a drug so that my kidney isn't rejected by his body. And unfortunately, the drug that he's on increases his risks of skin cancer. The kidney donation was a success, and her brother is still alive today. Unfortunately, her sister passed away waiting for a kidney. The best part about being a kidney donor for her was getting to see her nephews grow up with a dad. Truthfully, my little brother has four sons. And at the time of our surgery, one of his children was still in elementary school. And that son is now a junior in high school. And my brother is here to raise his four sons. Thanks for watching. We hope this inspires you to help your family, friends, and loved ones. In this week's class of Spotlight, we caught up with Ms. Mackey's U.S. History class. For a final project of the year, students got to experience a hands-on Civil War activity. The idea is just to give students a little bit of a sense of what it would be like to be a soldier in war, specifically the Civil War, because of how different things were in that time. You know, literally no technological advances whatsoever. Um, and what these young folks who were, some of them were very close to the age of even our students who were enlisting. So just that idea of trying to get in somebody else's shoes, learning some perspective. Students went through different stations, illustrating what it was like to be a soldier, but also learned along the way. Well, I learned how hard it was to be a soldier in the Civil War, and how like uh, the soldiers ate, and how the soldiers had to move, and how like how hard it was to eat that hard tack, which was honestly disgusting, and how it was very hard to like walk around with the packs. Me and my partner decided to run with the packs because you know why not, and that was that was pretty hard. And then I also learned a little bit academically from it. I learned about a lot about the Battle of Gettysburg. I learned a lot about uh, how the rations were distributed and how much rations each person would get. And overall, I think it was a great experience, but I really did learn that Civil War soldiers had it really rough. This has been Niley Smith reporting for Jordan TV.
Whoa, look who stopped by the studio to say farewell. It's Timmy Trojan. Hi, hey, Timmy, Timmy Trojan. Trojan. Timmy Trojan, you must be really hot with all this extreme weather. Well, Timmy Trojan, this has truly been a crazy year with twists and turns coming from all directions. There are a lot of obstacles thrown our way, but we still made it a terrific year online and in person. This year will be a year to remember for sure, and one we will tell stories about for a long time. Agreed. It's one for the record books. Thank you everyone for supporting and watching Trojan TV. Have a great summer. Bye! Goodbye. And cut! All right. Jeez, it is so hot. Goodbye! Bye! Bye. Day sounds fun. Even though it's already passed, you can still celebrate. Oh, yeah, we don't have socks. I got them. Where are they? Well, where do you think they are? Oh, I'm not. She is not gonna pick up yeah. No, I'm gonna pick up my own socks. I know what music goes, but I don't know the names in ours of songs like you do. You probably spent 24 hours looking online. Okay, what's the name of this song? What's the name? What's the? Oh, who's the person who writes this song? You do that all day, probably. Just get good. Thanks, guys. No, sit up. I'm counting you down. Shoulders smile. back. Okay, smile. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> that looks ridiculous. Tell me why. No, okay, no. Zachary. No. Hey, nothing but a heart. What? Tell me why. No. Nothing but a heart. Tell me why. Nothing but a mistake. Tell me why. I never want to hear you say, I want it that way. Can you can you two please like zip it? One more time. We've got six minutes. We can do this. Six. Ready? Yo. Look who stopped by the studio to say farewell. It's Timmy Trojan. Oh my god. I didn't know that was a lie. Can I say something? When he says that, can you all say hi, Timmy? Hi, Timmy Trojan's not supposed to be in the scene. Yes, he is. No, he's not. Yes, he is. No. Scroll down. Well, those were fun. Wait, no, Timmy Trojan, stay up here. Yeah, no, they yeah, no. Oh, he comes in in the next no, scene. No, he doesn't walk in. There's no more. This is no. No, no, there's no, no. There's one more. No, piece no, no. After we this. need to delete this part. 